Do you want to make this silky, rich, hydrating, and soothing peptide cream without heating anything? Well, then you're in luck because I'm going to show you not only how, but how to write it out and basically give you a, a mini lesson on how to write a formula like this. It's easier than you might think. This cream is great for those who may struggle with acne as it's not extremely heavy and all of the ingredients are considered non-commonogenic. So first thing I did was decide which actives and humectants I wanted and of course the emulsifier. A lot of how we choose the ingredients depend on the emulsifier as most of them have certain requirements and will either be cationic, aionic, or non-ionic. It's important to pay attention to that in the supplier's product description. Don't worry too much about the aionic stuff right now. Just remember non-ionic is compatible with cationic and aionic. So you're good to go if you use a non-ionic em emulsifier and most of them are these days. <laughs> that usually applies to surfactant systems. So I usually build on these three things and the basic blueprint of a formula is this. See this chart I made? This is essentially what goes into every single cream, butter, or emulsified formula. Think of it as a pretty solid blueprint to build a formula. Each ingredient has its usage rates and requirements which all play into the amounts that will be used. Let's go through the list. I personally build my formulas this way because they are ingredients that I always will use everything except um, the extracts and actives required, like a chelator which, or a chelator, however you pronounce it, which binds metal ions and essentially helps the preservative. A humectant, I will always typically use vitamin E and preservatives are usually always required and actives and extracts and extras. And of course the oils, butters or, and or water. So when you know what you want to use, like you have a general idea, just start filling things in and leave the water last. Now your emulsifier, depending on the one you want to use, will determine if the other ingredients you want to use in the formula are okay as well. So you're going to want to look at the supplier's specifications and formulation requirements for each ingredient especially the emulsifiers and the preservatives as some have certain conditions to function pop properly and you can find this on the website wherever you purchase the ingredient it will have all this information on the the website description the emulsifier i'm going to use today is sepi plus which is a new one for me but let's go look at the supplier's website to see what requirements this emulsifier uses so Sepi Plus, we can see, is an effective emulsifier for up to 50% oils and can be heated, but we won't be heating this one today because we're going to be using all liquid ingredients. Now, if we were using a butter or tallow, then we would need to heat it. Or if we were adding more conditioning fatty acids like uh, acetyl alcohol, I'm sorry, fatty alcohols like acetyl or acetyl, then it would need some heat. So I got this on Lotion Crafter. Let's look at the formulation guide. So if we scroll down, we can see that for cream gels, it's best added to the oil phase. So that's what we're going to do. By looking here, we can also see how much we'll need. It has a usage rate of 0.2 to 3%. So since we're wanting a thicker cream, we'll use 2%, which isn't too high. We don't want it overly thick and clumpy. Remember, this is all going to be like a learning experience. If you're first using these ingredients, you're going to sometimes you'll have to play around with the percentages until you get the consistency that you're wanting. But I'm going to go with 2% for the emulsifier and we're going to hope it, it gets us the texture we want. Now for the actives, one I'm wanting is a peptide, specifically Peptide 3000 from Lotion Crafter, which is one of the more affordable ones. This one we're using has a usage rate of up to 6%, which we will not need that much, so we're going to do 2%. And it needs to be added at a cooler temperature, which is fine because we won't be heating anything. Now let's look at some of our humectants. So we have acetyl glucosamine, which is in the humectant family, and so is urea. And let's look at what requirements they have. Urea is water soluble and not heat sensitive. It's an excellent ingredient for soothing irritated skin. Its capabilities are unmatched in my opinion. It should be in everything. And acetyl glucosamine we can see is pretty awesome too. It does so many things. It increases moisture, can help with hyperpigmentation, and it's already present in our skin cells. So yes, yes, and yes, we're gonna be using it at 3%. It's water soluble. And propendiol is, has been my humectant of choice lately. It's not as tacky at all like glycerin. I just love it. 
So if you don't have it, you can always use glycerin. I also wanted lighter oils for this. I didn't want it to be heavy at all and more tailored for acne prone skin. So I chose Capric Caprylic Triglycerides and Jojoba Oil for a total of 15% oil phase. Now you can use more if you want, but it will make this cream heavier and we want it to be more hydrating, not heavy. And for the preservative, we're going to be using Germal Plus. It's really the easiest to formulate with out of all the preservatives. So we're going to fill in all our percentages and then we'll figure out our water last by subtracting what we have, all the other percentages from 100 and what's left will give us our water percentage. So here's the formula and here's the exact uh, grams for a, 20, a 284 gram batch. Everything you're going to need are the ingredients, uh, mixing bowls or glass beakers, whatever you have. You can use plastic uh, measuring cups if that's all you have. An immersion blender, a scale that weighs one gram increments, a pH reader, and jars to store your cream in. Okay, we're going to start with phase A, which is all of the water-soluble ingredients. I'm going to use a cucumber hydrosol that I made before for this formula. It offers some natural scent and soothing properties. And then I'm going to add a, our chelating ingredient uh, and next our propendiol. Don't forget to tear your scale out each time. And next we're going to add our urea and acetyl glucosamine. And we're going to stir that up well by hand till it's mostly dissolved. And we're also going to add our extract. And for my extract, I'm going to be using a basil extract that I made for my basil plants. Basil has a lot of skin brightening properties. It's a tyrosinase inhibitor. If you don't know what that is, look it up. Lastly, our peptide will go into phase A. And now we're going to move on to phase B, which is our oil phase. And we're going to add all the oil soluble ingredients, including our preservative and our emulsifier, Cepi Plus. And then we're going to pour phase B into phase A and scrape everything out with our little spatula. And then we're going to mix them really well with our immersion blender. And as you can see, this will thicken up really fast, but you want to ensure that everything is fully incorporated. So keep mixing even though it looks emulsified. So you'll want to scrape your, your mixer off several times and keep mixing. And then we're gonna test the pH. Make sure your pH reader is put in a small glass of water first to kind of reset it and then test your cream. Thankfully, this cream was at the perfect pH, which is 5.12. We don't need to raise it or drop it, which is really nice. It's very rare when that happens. You want your pH to be between 4.5 and 5.5. Now we can bottle this up or jar it up. I'm going to use a four ounce matte black glass jar that I got off Amazon. I really love these. They are so luxurious looking. And now let's try this bad boy out on our skin. It's surprisingly pretty lightweight and it definitely has a gel like feel to it, but it also still feels slightly creamy. This is a very characteristic feel, skin feel of the polymer family that create these type of cream gels. It's hard to explain unless you've tried it on your skin. It's like a a blend between a gel and a cream. I've actually been using this for a few days on my face at night and I really like it. When you first apply it, it feels mildly draggy on the skin for about 10 minutes. I admit I really didn't like that at first, but within 10 minutes it's gone and my skin just feels really hydrated and it stays hydrated all night and it's really grown on me. I think because we have several humectants in pretty high amounts, this adds to that feeling right after applying, but it really doesn't bother me now, especially because it goes away quickly. This cream is ideal for people who can't tolerate heavy oils. We stuck to acne friendly ingredients. I hope you make this for yourself and see if you like it. Leave your comments below and any questions you have. Please like and subscribe. I've actually put my Patreon on hold for now because I really just need to add more content to it, which is going to take a lot of time. But I'll let you know when it's ready again and filled with informational content and bonus stuff that you're not going to find on, on my Instagram or my YouTube. Otherwise, check my description for all my links, website info, and formulas I sell and where to buy all these ingredients. Thanks for watching.